So I'm going to warn you right off the jump right now. Uh, don't watch this bee removal video um, because it's incredibly anticlimactic. But that said, thanks for tuning in to Mac Bee Buzzin'. I'm Ryan McElhaney, and uh, let's take a look at these bees. Yeah. Well, it's a Friday night, and uh, it's been a busy week at the office, and I don't know what you do on Friday nights to uh, unwind, but if you're a beekeeper, then uh, it sometimes involves going and digging into a beehive to relocate some bees. So I've got some friends out in the country that have some bees in a, a box in the ground, and I've actually removed bees out here before. The very first removal that I ever did was actually out here. And so I'm returning to the same spot. We did have it covered over with, uh, with a brick. They sent me a note and said the bees are back. Shouldn't be a super complicated move. Uh, it was really small last time. And uh, I'm gonna assume it's probably gonna be pretty similar this time as well. So we're about to find out. I've got a couple hours to do this before I lose sun. But as you can see, it's beautiful out here nice country area got the birds chirping and uh, we've got lots of beautiful flowers out here Let me show you what we're looking at over here. So you can see here, that's the entrance. So we're gonna get that opened up. We'll see if there's any comb in there and uh, we'll be taking them back to our bee yard. Lots of activity though. It's a beautiful sunny day. About to smoke myself out. Got good smoke going though. And I don't actually burn burlap, but I use burlap in the top of my smoker just to keep the wood chips and stuff from trying to fall out when I'm using it. Alright, got our equipment together. Hopefully, I've got a decent view with the camera down there. Lots of pretty little purple flowers down here. Just trying to clear out the space a little bit here. Give 
give it a just a little puff. Don't want too much in there. And we're gonna go as slow as we're able, trying to get under this box. And we're gonna try and see which direction they're building the comb in here. Doesn't feel incredibly heavy. Yeah, they hadn't been in here very long. <laughs> Not only is there no comb, like that is about the extent. So they just swarmed in here recently. Probably a cast off swarm. The main thing, honestly, that I'm going to look for is to see if we can spot the queen. This is a little surprising, honestly. do a little more than that just want to spread them out so I can look for the queen all right she's not there Okay, got some interesting behavior. They're marching in a circle. Not entirely sure where they think they're going. Because there's no queen there. You can see the bees right there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this in the box over here. I'll set this here. I'm gonna watch them walk a little bit. And they're not on that other side. So, begs the question, are we missing any hiding down in here somewhere? Yeah, I mean, there's just a few. There's a, these boxes do have a lip on them. So it's entirely plausible that she's hanging out under that lip right there. And I think about the only way I'm gonna get a chance to look and see is if we can kind of run them up and out. So I'm just gonna do gentle smoke. I'm not, not wanting to do a whole lot. Just want enough. To try and get them to kind of march this direction a little bit. I think before we go too crazy on that, I'm gonna go ahead, and we'll move this right over here. And I'm gonna put this right on top, just to kind of shrink down the size of that hole. It would be really peculiar if there was a cluster without a queen.
So you can see some of them coming up and going in that hole right there with the rest of the bees, even without a queen. I'm going to run these girls down in and go ahead and put this lid on. All right, so that was kind of anticlimactic, wasn't it? that up and we're gonna put that right there so this is definitely about as boring and anticlimactic as bee removals get so the thing that makes this truly fascinating is the friend sent me a note about this um, goodness probably back on Sunday or Monday I mean it's been it's been a minute and uh, I figured eh, we'll give them a week we'll see what kind of comb they build I know that there's plenty of forage out here for them so I figured they'd be building up a little bit um, since they were already moved into that box and uh, incredibly fascinating to just find a cluster of bees hanging out in there still with absolutely zero comb. At this point, zero resources, because normally when they move into a space, they have their honey crop full so that they can build out wax and try and get things situated for their new nest. And there's nothing in there. So they didn't build comb in there. So that's fascinating. And they don't have resources then to build comb now unless they go out and forage. But it's going to be tough for them to get in the business of doing that at this point. And I was really hoping that I could at least just salvage a queen, find her in there, and uh, then I could just basically do a split tomorrow since it's Saturday and give them a frame, just give them a little bit of a, a boost and a start and use the queen and the, the, uh, the colony. And that's not even really an option because there's no queen. But these girls are still acting like they have a nest. And I don't know, we'll let this play out. We'll see what happens. What I really suspect probably happened, I bet these bees moved in to that box with the idea that they were going to start a nest and probably around that same day the uh, my friend probably came out here to mow and the bees that were in there thinking it was a great idea to move in all of a sudden realized maybe it wasn't as safe of a location as they thought and perhaps 
they took off looking for a new spot. And then these could have been bees that were hanging out and working in the field because it was a nice day. And by the time they came back, the colony had moved along and these girls were just kind of left behind to fend for themselves. That's my working theory right now. Well, not every bee removal is the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, every once in a while you get a dud, every once in a while you get in and you find a dead colony because people treated them. That wasn't the case here. This was just a really teeny tiny ball of bees. And it is the sort of thing that's still worth doing. Um, still fun to just kind of feel out, you know, come up with your hypotheses on why you think that it would have just been that small cluster of bees. Um, so, a couple of theories. I mean, I'm still mulling this over. I've stated a few of them while I was gathering the bees, but I mean, it could be that it was an after swarm. Some bees got lost whenever the other swarm came out. Um, it could be that it was a small swarm when it originally issued from the hive and maybe the queen got injured, eaten by a bird, or got lost uh, during the process of swarming when the bees were getting situated. It's just a little perplexing though that they continued to stay clustered the way they were and as calm the way that they were and the fact that they, there were still bees that were clearly coming back from foraging in the field. Uh, that's the thing that's a little perplexing to me. But I've got them in the box wasn't anything exciting. If you made it this far, <laughs> congrats. Uh, I put it on the label that you shouldn't watch this video because it's the most anticlimactic bee removal ever. But that said, if you want to see one that is exciting, then I would encourage you to check out my video when I did the uh, bee removal from the lift 40 feet in the air at a old 1901 historical building. Uh, that would be a good one for you to check out if you really want to see a bee removal with some old gnarly comb and lots of bees, me getting stung, and yes, finding the queen at the end of a two-day removal. But uh, thanks for watching. If you would, hit that like, that subscribe, and that bell notification icon, and uh, we'll continue to make more content. Yeah.